Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. Until recently, diesel engines have mainly been seen hanging around truck stops. Using fuel oil instead of gasoline, diesels have been known for loud noise, dense black exhaust smoke, and slow acceleration. Nevertheless, almost all of the world's automakers are trying to find happiness with diesels. General Motors, for one, is hoping that diesels will extend the life of their biggest cars. This week, we test a model that falls into that category and more, the Oldsmobile 98 Regency Diesel. At almost 18 and a half feet long, it's one of the last great American land yachts. The Oldsmobile 98 Regency tips the scales at almost 4,300 pounds. This biggest Olds can be had in both our four-door and a two-door sedan. Base price weighs in at a hefty $12,300 and includes the usual power options. The 5.7 liter V8 diesel added $650 to the base price. The only transmission is a very good GM three-speed automatic with a fuel-saving locked-up torque converter. The end result, EPA mileage estimates of 22 MPG City and 33 Highway. And that's nearly the range we experienced with a test average of 28 miles per gallon. Who would have thought that a two-ton box could do that? And it's a box, all right. From its formal egg crate grill to its almost slab sides, this car is designed for every inch of room to be useful. The lines are long and sharply edged, and the fit and finish are what you'd want from such a high-priced car. Only on the front hood and rear trunk lid did we find any notice of the 98's true nature. And surprise of surprises, very little black smoke appears when you first crank the engine. On the other hand, that clatter you hear surely says diesel. Open the hood and the clatter grows louder. This looks like pre-emission law days. Few hoses, no vacuum pump. That's because it's a diesel, and the rules for them are not yet that stringent. The result is an amazingly open engine compartment, despite the Regency's bevy of options. And of course, with a diesel, you won't find any spark plugs or carburetor. But there are two batteries. Diesels need lots of cranking power. You'll also have to pay special attention to checking and changing the oil. That's critical in a diesel. Fortunately, here it's easy. Early Olds problems with clogged fuel injectors and water-contaminated fuel pumps seem to be solved. Doors open, the Regency shouts luxury. The seats are soft with adequate support. This car had the optional power adjustments that gave all but our shortest drivers comfortable seating. Oldsmobile has never gone in for much in the way of gimmicks and instrumentation. There aren't many gauges to be found, and those that are, are straightforward and simple to read. The ocean of plastic wood, looking right at home here, surrounded a very good ventilation system and an okay electronic clock radio combination. Only a diesel engine preheat weight light and a warning of water in fuel tells you that this car is different from gasoline 98s. Room for four is certainly no problem, nor is its legal limit of five. In fact, with a third in the front, and quite comfortably, we might add, the Regency can even carry six. Equally large is the trunk, able to sleep four or hold twice our normal set of luggage. Space would be even more abundant if you didn't need the spare tire. Diesels in general are most noted for economy, not performance. It took a solid 10 seconds to accelerate our 98 from 40 to 55 miles per hour. Passing on anything but clear, straight, and level is out of the question. The power-assisted front disc rear drum brake stopped the Regency from 30 miles per hour in a long 55 feet. The brakes were very sensitive and easy to lock. The distance from 55 miles per hour was much better, a good showing of 134 feet. However, we did encounter a lot of fade. In addition, the rear brakes locked every time and produced a lot of wheel hop. That's where the back of the car wants to keep going after the front has already stopped. You might think this giant has no place going through our handling course, but here's another surprise. Yes, it is soft, and yes, it rolls, but the 98 made a good accounting of itself. 
The car was secure, despite needing a lot of braking, and managed to exit the course at the same 35 entry speed. Steering is light and numb, with no road feel, but reasonably quick and fits well within the overall design of the car. A real-life emergency, where a van nearly sideswiped our Regency, convinced us that this family limo can indeed get out of harm's way when necessary. With everything else about the 98 being so big, the turning circle was no surprise. At 43 feet, our test track was just wide enough for the turn. I drove the 98 Regency for the better part of a week. Very little of the diesel clatter came through to the interior, and I forgot about it after a short while. That, by the way, is about the only sound you hear in this Olds. Not so hard to ignore was the smell of fuel oil when idling, somewhat reminiscent of a flooded home furnace. And there's still the problem of finding enough stations that have diesel fuel. So in several ways, you still have to pay for this newfound economy. But besides that, 98 is a totally comfortable interstate driving machine. Becoming the main provider of diesels for all of GM's car lines was a big gamble for Oldsmobile. But perhaps they needed them most. Olds has historically had mostly big car clientele. Well, regardless, they have succeeded. And despite some early problems, the diesel engine gives a car the size of our 98 Regency diesel better fuel economy than many models half its size.